Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company and so thrilled to be joined by today's guest, Alexandra Shipp, to talk all about Netflix's Tick, Tick, Boom. And I wanted to start by talking about your audition because you've spoken about how you really wanted to use that first self-tape that you were sending in as a space to show, especially vocally, all of the different things that you could potentially bring into the role. Because at that point, you obviously don't, don't know what a director, you know, in this instance being Lynn, Manuel Miranda, is looking for within a character. And so I was interested in what some of the things were that you really wanted to ensure that you captured and showcased both in your interpretation of the character at that point, but also in terms of the skills that you wanted to show that you could potentially bring to this role? Yeah, so for this, I just knew that I had to do something outside of, of my comfort zone. And, and I, I was like, how do I be unique? You know, how do I stand out? Uh, I've, I've always loved singing. I've been singing since I was really young. And so I really wanted to showcase what I could do vocally. Also, it's Lin-Manuel Miranda, right? So I know he's going to appreciate a run or two. So I threw all of them at him and it was come to your senses. And I was like, come to your senses. Like I went in, it was so, you know, when you just do too many runs and you're like, that doesn't sound like the song anymore. I did that. Um, but I knew that it was something that I just, I just had to do. And, uh, when I got the call, uh, saying that he wanted me to come in and, and do some chemistry reading with Andrew, I was like, ah, I think you like my song, you know, but it's, it's, it's Jonathan Larson, who was a, a innovative revolutionary songwriter. Um, and then it's Lin-Manuel Miranda, who was able to do that again, 30 years later. So for me, I was just like, okay, I, I know the audience that I'm, I'm catering to, and I want to make sure that I, I can give as much as I possibly can to that. And the great thing about that is that when you make choices like that and you kind of go in with like all of the elements is you can always strip it down. It can always be pared down. And I was interested if if some of that kind of carried over to how you would work on scenes, particularly your musical number within the film itself when it came to shooting, where it's like almost if you make the bigger choice, then you can find the more intimate version if you need to, to pull it in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we... With Lynn and I, we had a month to prepare together before we went into shooting and then we got shut down and then we came back six months later and we're able to kind of bring it on on back in. But for me, I knew that uh, as an actor, my job was to come to set with ideas, not only based off of the things that he and I worked on together before shooting, but also after the fact, right? So I knew that I needed to come through with colors. And Lynn is so brilliant and meticulous that he has exactly in his mind what he knows he wants out of the scene. And then it's wonderful him being an actor himself because it, he's down for the collaboration of it all. And he's like, okay, I'm looking for this. Alex is bringing me that. How do we fuse these two worlds? So you get on set and he's like, okay, what are we thinking about? What are we doing here? And I love that because that's how I come to set. So it became this like ball that we were tossing back and forth to each other being like, all right, this is what I want. This is what I, I think we're doing. And for me to be like, okay, I've come to you with happy, sad, excited, horny, hungry, like all of the things, the human emotions that we feel and then able to apply to wherever we're at in our day, whether that's fighting with your with your lover, whether that's celebrating your lover, whether that's just hanging out with your friends, you know, what is that energy that you bring? I also love that you created this idea and this interpretation of Susan as a character, um, but also kept like a real openness to be able to play with Andrew Garfield in because so much of it is your scenes together, because in essence, the way that we see you on screen is through his viewpoint, through his retelling, through his memories of moments. Um, and so was interested in, in some of the moments that you really found within Susan through that openness and that playfulness that you and Andrew developed together. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, working with Andrew was such a pleasure. Uh, and I think that you can see that just based off of the, the, the film and his work in it. Um, but it was pretty initial right away. I had my, my chemistry test with him. And from the minute Lynn called action, there was just, it was our scene where we were fighting. It was therapy. And we're just right away screaming and crying at each other. And like, 
it, like I felt like I was breaking up with the love of my life. And, um, and, and after we had finished it and I was leaving, uh, well, after we had finished it, Andrew and I are just like red and snotty and teary. And then we look over and Lynn's like, that was good. You know? And we were just like, okay, he liked it. Like in my mind. And I was like, I think I did something in there. And then I was like, I went home and I was like, I feel like I just broke up with someone. Like it felt real. Um, and Andrew did that a lot when we were working together, which is one, the sign of a great actor, but two, just the sign of really good chemistry was that we both were on that wavelength together where it all just felt so real and it felt like it was supposed to feel, you know? Yeah. And when it came to shooting that same scene in the film, um, I wanted to talk about what you've been mentioning about essentially doing the work emotionally to get into that headspace before you even got to set. So it's kind of getting yourself into that headspace. Like he hasn't been taking my phone calls. He's not having this conversation that we need to have. You know, I can't make my decision until you tell me what you're doing. Um, and was, was interested if that's something that you do for certain types of scenes or frequently, or if it was the, you know, kind of what the genesis was of knowing that you needed to get yourself into that certain psychological space before you even arrived on set to go into shooting it. Well, that's the beauty about uh, acting and about what I do is that uh, you have to come to set prepared. Um, that's not just knowing your lines. I think anyone can memorize lines, but it's coming to set knowing how you feel and what happened before the audience sees you in this moment. So I was like in my trailer pacing and I was like this moment he won't answer his phone. You know, like I was, ha I like had the whole breakdown. I was like, I've been trying to call him all day and he's been ignoring me. I mean, and you know how you feel when you're about to go into a fight and you've kind of like had the whole conversation play over in your head a million times. So you're like hot about it, you know, and, it, and it's consistently finding that. And there are moments where, um, I, I would, I would build to both. Like I would build where I was coming in hot and then I was like, okay, but what if I came in really insecure? And what if I came in being like, he doesn't love me. There's nothing for me here. Like, what if I came in being like, uh, being almost beside myself and begging him, you know? And that's where those, where those different choices come in. And I work those out with, with Lynn in rehearsal. And then I work them out even more so on my own free time in my trailer before I get to set. And then when I'm on set, I'm kind of like pacing in a corner <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, okay, where am I at? Where am I at? And then, and then uh, they go, Alex, you ready? And they call action. And then I come into it with whatever energy I've been holding holding inside whatever I decided for that scene. So it all comes down to what are your choices and how are you going to execute in this scene in order to get what you want? Because in therapy, all she's asking is, what do I mean to you? Yeah. What do I mean to you? And if I mean that to you, where is the consideration for that? Do you have consideration for me? Because I obviously have consideration for you. Otherwise I wouldn't ask your opinion. You know, and it's and it's finding those nitty gritty finite details that make acting and make craft that much more exciting. That's the stuff that gets me excited about jobs is I'm like, OK, what if she came into the scene and she was like, I just want to kiss you the entire time. She just wants to kiss him. What does that look like? You know, and it's these small details that I think elevate the performance. I absolutely love that. And and one of the spaces that, that feels like it opened up choices in how you could respond to it as a character is that moment where she tells him that within their relationship, she feels like the artist's girlfriend. And that's the mm -hmm. identity that she feels she's taking on rather than being a fully fledged person and partner to him, because mm -hmm. that's the box he's put her in. Um, and also it's interesting because she's kind of an ingenue to him, but not in that traditional sense. You know, she has her own world, her own things going on creatively. It's not about sitting around trying to become part of his story she's trying to create her own story and in turn that's how she influences his art um, and with that kind of journey that she's going on about her identity within herself and her identity within the relationship I was interested in in how you set about making a lot of those choices and how you felt she was viewing herself and responding to that yeah it's such a great question because I think that uh for me to do my job as an actor, I have to judge my characters. And I found myself really judging her a lot and really kind of going over it with Lynn being like, why won't Susan just give him like two days? 
like she gotta know now like and she keeps pushing and she keeps pushing it yeah but like she could give him a beat this is a huge moment in his life and and then going back and forth with Lynn and him being like well this is a huge moment for her and me being like oh god you're so right because what the thing of the crazy thing about human psyche is it's it's uh our minds trick us into thinking certain things uh and I always want to say Andrew Jonathan never said, you're just my girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? Like she put herself in that box. And when she's like, oh, I'm just a girlfriend. And he's like, what are you talking about? She's like, well, that's the reality. Like she's, she's making this up. We have a a power within ourselves that we can create our own situations and we can, we can hold ourselves back based off of what we think other people think of us. And she really did that in that moment. And she's like, well, what do I mean to you? And he's like, well, what do you think you mean to me? I I still have the decorations up from the party that I threw from you for you. You know, I, I tell you that I love you all the time, but, but she needs more. And I've been there, honey. You know what I mean? There have been times where I'm like, I'm gonna need a little bit more from you, babe. And she doesn't get it. And it's not that he he can't give it to her. It's just that he can't do it right now. But in playing Susan, I got to play a woman who chose herself. And very rarely do you see that uh, written for the the female narrative is that she chooses herself. Yes, she is basing a decision based off of her partner, but simply because she loves them. And she's not always talking about a man, you know, there's that test. She's not always talking about a man. She's talking about herself. And that is that it's, I'm just like so honored to be able to play that because Susan chooses herself. She knows just how important in um, Jonathan's career is to him, but she knows how important her career is to her. And regardless of how she feels about anyone, how she feels about herself is the one thing that specifically matters to her. Um, And being able to play that just was like, it kind of brought me full circle for myself too, where I'm like, whoo, girl, you better live for you because no one's going to take better care of you than you are. And within that journey of choosing herself as well, what's so great about it is that the film at its core is exploring Jonathan's relationship with you know, success as an artist, what that means to him, what he's striving for, very specific goalposts that he has for himself. But I really love that with Susan, we get to have a whole other dialogue around those same themes of what does success mean to Susan? And it doesn't all have to be the same thing. It can exist in so many different places and so many different ways. And in choosing herself, it's also about choosing the way that she connects to her artistry and her creativity. Um, And so how did you want to set about really exploring those themes and having such a dialogue about that with her as a character? Yeah, well, I think the thing about success is that we define our success, but we also define our failures. And I think that uh, in a lot of ways, Jonathan saw her moving to the cat skills as her giving up when in all actuality it was the complete opposite for her and just because she wasn't willing to do data word processing for the next couple of years and try and build up she was like I want to go I want to work at the studio that's going to give me a chance to not only dance and to teach dance but to also retrain myself so that I can come back stronger it looked like it was a, a step in the right direction a level up Whereas Jonathan was like, I can't, I can't move away. Cause if I move away, then I give up. And um, when we think about success, we have to think about what it means. Is, is success monetary? Is it emotional, spiritual, physical? What does that look like? And for Susan, her focusing on her art, her focusing on her craft, that was success period, first and foremost. And with her craft as a dancer, How did you want to navigate her relationship with her physicality and with her body? Because she's gone through having an injury and not being able to perform at the level that she would have been before and has Mm -hmm. has had to really relearn and retrain elements of her, which I thought was also a really interesting aspect to explore about her relationship with herself creatively. And so how did you want to navigate that relationship that she has within herself as well? Well, one, I uh, 
my older brother is a uh, basketball player, but he's torn his ACL and his MCL twice. So I kind of had a front row seat of what it looked like because dancers are athletes of an athlete who was dealing with the, the mindset of I'm not going to be able to perform the way that I have always been able to perform. There's going to be differences. There are going to be setbacks and there's possibly going to be retirement. And that is a human psyche moment. You know, that is something that really affects you. And I will not ever know what that feels like because what I do isn't always physical. Um, so I really wanted to dial into that. What does that look like emotionally? Then, uh, not being an athlete and training for this job, I actually threw out my back and, uh, yeah, she hit 30 and it was like, and I had to like kind of figure out what I was doing. Um, and I had a very similar injury to Susan where I had a bit of a limp and I was like, okay, universe making me method right now. Like, all right, I'm going to find a way to use it. And it also was like on the same leg that Lynn and I had chosen and like all of this. So it, I feel like everything was coming together cosmically to kind of like help move and navigate my, my, um, performance. Um, so I was able to use that. And so there were moments where like, I would feel a little in pain and I would be like, oh my gosh, this is dialing me in that much more with Susan. Like, man, to not be able to move right now, knowing that the, the red light on the camera is on and like Lynn Manuel Miranda standing right there. And like, I want to do a good job, but like my back, you know, and I got this weird little limp and I'm giving him a, a, a rock to my walk. And I was like, wow, you know, this is, this is physically what Susan is feeling and it's frustrating. And I can now understand her that much more because of it. Yeah. And when it, when it comes to her movement within your dance performance, um, you ended up filming her, your main dance point at the film in November, but actually started training and choreographing right in January, because obviously like you mentioned before the extended time of the shutdown as well. Um, and when you had all that time to be training for that specific scene, because it is such a moment, what are some of the things that you found within her movement as a character where it wasn't just about the choreography of the scene itself, but it was about an expression of her as a character for you? Well, I initially started training for this uh, on my own in November and December of 2019. So when I got the job, I knew that I had a uh, rehearsal starting in January and I'm not a dancer. I'm not a trained dancer. So I started with a coach and I just learned all the fundamentals and the basics. But what I was also really looking for was not like, all right, I need to be able to pick up choreography and like actually do it and, and not take like 20 hours for me to learn six steps. Um, but it also was, how does a dancer hold herself? How does she walk? How does she move about space? How does she... Um, sit how does she stand you know like I really love the idea of of the physicality of the non-movement moments for her she's not dancing all the time so who is she outside of that she's not like hunched over like 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 me my mother was here she told me to sit up um so I was like who is Susan in my physical body and so I really tried to find that and I was like okay I've got the emotions that go into it but what is the physicality that goes into it outside of her being on a stage and that's what meant so much to me was like training and getting and getting to that so that when I got to New York I was able to focus on the choreography and not the body necessarily in the same way if that makes sense. It really does. And and off the back of that, I want to talk a little bit about the physical blocking of scenes overall, because one of the things with the shutdown is it really inhibits the ability to do that. You know, you were, you were mentioning how if you were blocking out a scene, you couldn't be like, oh, maybe I'm going to touch this table or put this yeah. item down because then someone has to come in and disinfect it. Um, and so how did you kind of almost find a different way of evolving the way that you would come up with the physical blocking for your character within scenes when you couldn't actually do it, but you just had to do it psychologically before the take? It was a lot of like, uh, it was, it was counting steps. You know, if I knew that Susan was going to pick up a cup, I was like, all right, that's my cup. No one touched my cup. It's my cup. If I pick it up, I'll put it back. Don't worry about my cup. It's my cup, you know? Um, but also it was, it was understanding when Lynn would be like, this is what we're doing. And 
why do you think it is okay and then we come up with the why we're all doing what we're doing and then it was like okay then we're about to call action i'm thinking okay susan's really pissed right now my frame is about you know four feet wide four four feet high so this is my little box in which I can move. Okay. And if I need to touch something, okay. If I'm going to throw my purse, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to do that. And it was all psychological of like, it felt like a dance step, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, and like trying to find that flow and that flux to it. But also there would be times where I was like, then I got to touch this set. And he would be like, yeah, you do. You really do. Or like, uh, Lynn, I I'm singing right now. I got to actually sing. I can't mouth the words. I don't want to just, I was like, that's not enough. I need to, you need to see the veins popping. You need to see the spit coming out of my mouth. You need to feel it. And he was like, you're right. I really do. So everyone's got to like quadruple PPE right now and let's figure it out that way. Um, all of these moments, it's, it's not just like me in my mind, but also me communicating what I need to my director and him being like, all right, we're going to figure out how to make that happen because it's about the performance. Because if that's not there, then like, you know, the movie can be as beautiful as it possibly can. It's just, it, it, if I'm not working, I'm not working. And there was no way I was going to be the squeaky wheel on Lynn's first movie. No, uh-uh. give me the grease. And I love that you're bringing up some of the process there for for musical number when you sing Come to Your Senses, because it's so beautifully filmed and so emotive as a point within the movie for Susan as a character. And so was just very interested in in what that journey looks like, particularly in the way that Lynn chose to film it and even the camera work where he really has kind of like a lot of like crane work moving around you and just kind of almost kind of gliding around Susan as we're just stepping into her bubble. Yeah. Um Lynn is such a visionary, right? He knew the exact way that he wanted to film everything before we even got into rehearsals in January. Um, and he is an adaptable brilliance to him that uh, I think is just something that's been really unmatched in my career. Um, but the way that he was shooting it, I was hyper aware of, of the movements of the camera because one, social distance. So it was a lot of the dance was me and this, this crane and this crane op. Um, and then a good amount of the dance was someone who was like in full mask, goggles, face shield, uh, smock, gloves, and then a steady cam strapped to them. So I really felt for our sweet camera op. Um, but it was it was finding that dance and 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 making it so. I mean, there are always moments where you're like looking in the camera and then you're like, crap, I looked in the camera. But there's also moments of like real sweet spots where you can where you can find that. And I was lucky enough to be able to have Andrew sitting on set too. So I was just like, all right, sing to Andrew, tell Andrew how much you love him. Hey, John love me come to your senses what do you think about me do you love me as much as i love you um because i do that with my lines when i'm acting i'll have a line that says um one thing and i'll be like but what is what am i actually saying with this line what is it truly you want some sugar or do you want me to make it for you is what i'm really saying so for this it was like come to your senses look at me. Do you love me? What do I mean to you? And I was singing based off of what I was actually saying, not necessarily what I'm singing, because what we say to people and how we feel differentiate a lot of the time. So it's like, how am I going about this? Am I really asking him or am I asking him in a roundabout way? But what I really mean is like, tell me to stay, you know? And the love language between the t these two characters is, is a really beautiful thing because even when they're arguing and they're fighting with one another, it's still from a place of love. It's never that that doesn't exist. It's just that they're in different spaces at different times and it's just not quite coming together in the right way. I, um, and was it important to you that that be an element of the conversation and the dialogue that they're having, even when things aren't in a good space, that it always comes from a place of love and affection for one another? For sure. This is one of the main things that Lynn, Andrew and myself worked on in January when we were rehearsing was we got to find that love language. And though I think we naturally had it in the beginning, it was really fine tuning that and really honing that. And where is it? Where is that love? We need to be able to see that affection so that when they break up, it's not just detrimental for them, but for the audience. You know, we need the audience to know how much they loved each other so that they understand how sad they are to lose each other. Um, 
and really finding beats and moments in which we can get that across her kissing him, him kissing her hand, you know, the way that they speak to each other, the way that they look at each other, all of these things were so important to kind of continue that narrative. And when you look at love language, you see it in relationships, not only when they're complimenting each other, but also when they're fighting with each other. Um, and there's a real love there where it's just like, I just love you. It's like, yeah, I love you too, but do you love me as much? And it's like, you know, whatever, whatever you're fighting with someone, you want to make sure that they still know how you feel about them. And so we really tried to dial that in. That was of, of utmost importance to the three of us. And you've described how working on this film was really, of all your projects, the one that physically, emotionally, and psychologically just stretched and challenged you, you know, unlike anything else that you've ever worked on before. And what were those spaces that you felt like you almost discovered things about yourself or found yourself pushing yourself into spaces that you hadn't explored before as an artist? I think that for me specifically, I wanted, um, well, I wanted to do a good job, but I also really wanted to strip myself back and not be uh, a version of Alex, but to fully submerge myself into Susan. Um, and there were moments where I really kind of had to work hard at it. And then there were moments where it felt like it just flowed, like I had tapped into something, uh, especially when it comes to like, uh, of fighting with Andrew, I felt like I was going to have to like picture someone else, you know, and I didn't have to, I wasn't really fighting with Andrew. I was fighting with Jonathan and I was Susan and it felt really natural and really easy. Um, but there also was a huge element, uh, in other scenes where I'm really kind of finding who Susan is and, and portraying that in a digestible way so that the audience can kind of catch on and understand that. Um, and I also had to really challenge myself physically. Um, and like I said, like I ended up throwing out my back at one point. And that was because I was like so determined to represent this group of people, AKA dancers in as authentic of a way as I possibly could. Proud to say I did my own stunts. <laughs> but at the same time, like it was really nerve wracking for me. I wanted to be able to do a good job. I, I had to do a good job, um, not just for Lynn and Jonathan, but also for myself. And I really peeled back those layers and I really tried to um, like, cut my face and shave my head and like expose veins for this because um, Susan's a woman that I think a lot of women can relate to. Well, I think everything that, that you did and put into this role really comes across in the performance. It's really phenomenal. Congratulations on all of the success with the film. And thank you so much, Alexandra. Thank you.